You know, I've spent a great deal of time over the last two years analyzing and criticizing what I believe are major blunders by the Obama administration, more interested in winning elections, changing the demographics of our nation, and creating a socialized state where dependency is the norm, than protecting the safety and security of hardworking Americans. Now, you know me. Most of the time, I'm fearless. I've spent my life fighting, investigating, prosecuting, and sentencing the worst of the worst. But tonight, I'm worried. You may not know where places like Baghdad, Aleppo, Tehran, or Fallujah are, but if you don't think that what happens there matters to you, you're wrong. And I don't care if you live in Beaumont, Texas, New York City, or Anaconda, Montana. You need to be afraid. Because of his feckless foreign policy, President Obama, a man with no foreign policy experience, who doesn't learn a thing from his foreign policy blunders, a man who prefers to surround himself with political operatives, our nation, once the world superpower, has been minimized on the world stage and is neither respected nor feared. Barack Obama has proven to Russia's Putin, to Syria's Assad, to Iran's Ayatollah, and Afghanistan's Karzai, they can cross any red line that he draws with impunity. The latest disaster, of course, the Bergdahl trade of five of the worst savages, terrorists who wear their 12 years at Gitmo as a badge of honor, once again sending a message of weakness. Our commander-in-chief has literally replenished the enemy in a time of war, but not to worry. These five guys are not a threat to the United States. They are a threat to the safety and security of Afghanistan and Pakistan. If they're not a problem, why did you keep them in Gitmo for 12 years? And if they're not a problem, why was your president afraid to tell Congress he was even letting them out? And today, another example of Obama's ineptitude. Americans summarily evacuated from Baghdad as a band of the worst barbaric terrorists marches from the north on toward Baghdad to reclaim Iraq. They released prisoners, and they've added thousands of fighters to their ranks as they move through the country. And they are the richest terror group in existence. 500,000 citizens have fled Mosul in fear of them. And as they continue their march, the U.S. moves an array of aircraft carriers and destroyers into the North Arabian Sea and the Persian Gulf. Now, we spent $1 trillion. The blood of 4,500 American men and women killed and 32,000 of us injured in Iraq. Yet Barack Obama left Iraq contrary to the advice of military leaders and those like Senator John McCain, who said he left too early, when McCain stated on the Senate floor three years ago that the decision to do a complete early pullout was dictated by politics, not our national security. And Senator McCain said that history would judge President Obama's leadership with the scorn and the disdain that it deserves. America left Iraq as a state not able to stand on its own. And the head of this band of savages is a man named Abu al-Baghdadi, the new Osama bin Laden, a man released by Obama in 2009 who started ISIS a year later. And when Baghdadi left Camp Bukha, where the worst of the worst were held in Iraq, he threatened his American jailers, saying, I'll see you in New York. And as the nation of Iraq teeters on the brink of total destruction, there is no question that the march will inevitably continue toward the West and the United States. As though out of a movie, the march of the Sunni militants, along with ISIS troops, deemed even by al-Qaeda to be too militant, are letting criminals out of jail to add to their ranks, burning churches, beheading, crucifying, stoning, and shooting police and military, 
even civilians from the Maliki government. ISIS is dedicated to building an Islamic state dedicated to the slaughter and the massacre of the infidels. But Barack Obama is really tuned in. Uh, the world is less violent than it has ever been. It is healthier than it has ever been. It is more tolerant than it has ever been. And get this, although there were only 800 ISIS soldiers against 12,000 Iraqis trained by the United States, the Iraqis were so fearful, they dropped their weapons, they dropped their uniforms, and they even left a bank open for plunder. And now ISIS has a half a billion dollars in its hands. The bottom line, the country of Iraq is another burning cauldron in the Middle East, being overrun by those who seek to create an Islamic caliphate that considers us infidels and is dedicated to the killing of non-believers and our destruction. Yes, indeed, you need to be worried.